So do you wanna get started with apartment investing to build a real estate empire, but you don't feel ready? Like, are you concerned that brokers and investors won't take you seriously because you don't have an apartment investing a track record, that you won't be able to raise enough money to fund your deals, or you're gonna make a big mistake? Like if you answered yes to any of these questions, then you probably haven't built a team around you, and that's gonna hold you back from getting into the apartment investing game. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you who those people need to be on your team, how to recruit them, and so that you can use that to do your first deal and become financial free and break into the apartment investing game, even if you've never bought an apartment before. Let's do this. The biggest problem in the beginning is you don't have experience, but yet when you're talking to brokers, they don't take you seriously because you don't have any experience. So it's this chicken egg problem is how in the world do you break into the apartment investing game without, well, apartment investing experience? How do you overcome that, right? And how about raising capital? You know, uh, if you've never raised capital before, how do you get started with that? And, and of course, what about making the big mistakes, right? There's gonna be several extra zeros at the end of these things. And how do you really uh, avoid making big mistakes like investing in the wrong market or overpaying and things of that nature? These are all big questions. And I remember when I was flipping single family houses, you know, I think uh, the, my biggest a, a problem was that I had a lone wolf approach. And, you know, cause it was just me and buying and selling houses. We flipped three dozen houses and I didn't need any partners or a team. Yes, I had brokers I was buying to and I had a general contractor, but I didn't have partners or anything like that because I, I could use hard money, uh, for example. So when I got started in multifamily in 2011, I tried to use my single family mentality and it didn't really work. For example, I remember trying to raise money and I raised uh, about $250,000 for this first deal I did in 2011, a 12 unit kind of struggled with it. And then some, some time later in 2018, we tried to raise $750,000 for a 46 unit deal in Birmingham. And we almost couldn't close the deal. And after that, I learned about, hey, Michael, it's not about you doing everything your, your, yourself. It's about this idea of a larger team. Uh, both professionals, but also partners. So I learned about joint venture partnerships. And then a year later, we did a joint venture partnership and closed a 321 unit deal. It was, it was bought it for $9 million, raised $3.2 million. Did I raise some of that? Yes. I did not even raise the majority of it. It was through a joint venture partnership. And so what I'm saying is it's, it's all about your team when you break into apartments. I'll, I'll tell you another story. Well, that first deal I mentioned, a 12 unit, it was in Washington, D.C. It was a Section 8 uh, building and I hired the wrong property management company. And I had a professional tenant tenant in there and that killed me. I nearly ran out of money at that deal. Uh, wouldn't, wasn't paying rent. He was suing me every, every two months. And, you know, I, for example, I didn't have any kind of experienced advisor looking over my shoulder because that person would have told me not to buy in the district because it's a very pro tenant. That person also would have told me not to hire this particular property manager, but to hire someone who specializes in Section 8 subsidized housing. So lesson learned, right? Also, um, brokers weren't taking me serious I, I, either. I had some house flips and some rentals and I was calling brokers and they were asking me about my experience, my track record, and I didn't have any. And so I didn't, you know, and then they asked me for proof of funds, which I didn't have, and I went away. I, did, I couldn't even come back from that. And I was getting a lot of that and they were treating me, rightly so, as a new so what I learned since then, and this is probably the biggest difference from single family house investing to multifamily investing. If you want to scale your real estate investing, you can't bring a single family house investing mindset to multifamily. Okay, it's just it's just not going to serve you. And I tried that and I struggled for years to get, to get this right. What we know now is that if you want to scale your real estate investing, especially if you want to get in apartments, you it's you got to build a team. You got to build a team of professionals, a team of partners, and a team of advisors around you. Let's focus, first of all, on the team of professionals. Let's talk about, I mean, there's a whole variety of professionals that you need to have in your team, but let's talk about the three most important and probably the most important is, um, is a property manager, right? You definitely need property managers on your team. Uh, you need a lender on your team for, for sure. Those are uh, the first two most important. And of course, to get deal flow, you need a broker. I don't really consider Consider brokers a part of my team. I sort of do. My property manager and lender, I kind of do consider myself on my team. But the reason you need the first two, okay, so as that chicken Ed Prog and that property manager, you can leverage your team's experience when calling brokers, also when talking to investors, right? So for example, let's say I call up a broker and they ask me about my track record, I don't have any, and I slink away, right? Now versus what if I now recruited a property manager who manages 5,000 units. I now have a lender who's originated a billion dollars of loans. I have, an, I have a real estate attorney, I have a CPA, okay? And maybe I have someone I met at a, a RIA and he's kind of a, an experienced person and he's the first member of my advisory board. Now, 
Imagine I call up this broker and the broker and ask me, Michael, what's your track record? And I don't even talk about my, about my track record. I say, well, I, I'm working with Sam. They work, they, they, uh, they manage 5,000 units. I go, oh, Sam is a great guy. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and I'm working with Bob over here. He's, a, he's originated a billion dollars of loans. And I got, I got a team of, uh, of experts, like a real estate attorney. And we're starting to underwrite deals around 50 units and uh, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm also talking about my team. And I can almost guarantee that broker is not going to ask you for proof of funds because you're a serious person. You appear like a serious person because you've been able to assemble a team. And so the this I, this team approach uh, is a way, is the way to overcome your lack of experience. So this is a perfect example for that. But also uh, your property manager is the reason you need them is not only overcome your experience, but you need it for making offers. How, how are you going to know uh, in your underwriting, in your analysis, well, what's, what kind of rents should I use? What's the rent growth? What should the expenses be? Your property manager knows all these things in detail. Why well, you shouldn't have to make these things up or research them online. Lenders, what's the interest rate? What's the amortization? What's the down payment? What's the loan value? All these things you need to know uh, to put it in your underwriting. These are very important people on your, on your team. Um, and so the biggest message I have for you is to really focus on your team. And I think this is the biggest difference, okay? If I were to boil it down, I think... In your mind right now, there's probably a lot of things you don't know about how to do apartment building investing. How do you pick a market? How do you analyze deals? How do I do this? How do I do that? What, and, and those are all very important questions. But the most, the more important question to ask is who? Not how, but who? Who can help me do these things, right? Not how do I do these things? There's a lot of details to, 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 to figure out. But for example, you know, let's say you want to raise capital, which you should, right? But let's say you're concerned about doing it legally, which you should. Now, should you go to law school for six to eight years to figure out SEC law so you don't break the law? Well, no, that's silly, right? You wouldn't do that. You'd hire an attorney, an SEC attorney to do that. Okay, well, it's the same thing here, right? Should you figure out the ins and outs of how to manage your property or should you hire a professional property manager? You should hire the who, not figure out the how. Now, this mindset goes up and down the, the uh, real estate scaling spectrum using apartments, right? You should always be asking, who can help me do this? If you don't have the experience for something, let's say you don't have the experience to actually get a loan, which is a thing, you would bring in a who onto the general partnership to help you with experience. Now you would give them some of the general partnership interest and equity in that deal. But you're constantly asking who, not so much how. Again, how you got to figure out and you got to know just enough to manage the who around that how. And some of it you should definitely learn how to do yourself, but a lot of it, it needs to be a team member. So the, the other kind of who that you really need to put on a team, and I mentioned it briefly before, is this idea of an advisory board. You need people on board who are uh, experienced, who have bought apartment buildings before, who actually knows apartment buildings, and they know the ins and outs of the actual business. And I would love to be that who for you. I would like to be your first member of your team and help you break into the apartment investing game and really help you get that first deal done. So if that's something of interest to you, if you want to accelerate the time to actually get in apartment buildings, avoid some of the big mistakes and scale faster. If that's you right now, then let's have that conversation. There's a link below. Just go ahead and schedule that call. It's a 20 minute call. It's not a sales call, but our advisors are going to ask you about where you are right now in your situation, what your goals are right? Do you want to scale your real estate investing? Do you have a rental and you, you can't see yourself doing 20 or 50 of them? Do you have some flips and you can't see yourself 10xing that, right? You don't want to be in the same place you are right now next year. You want to change something and you want to scale and level up your investing. If that's you, then let's have that conversation, book a call, and let's see if we can help you get to that next, next level. Catch you next time.